Namaskar, my name is Mahalakshmi. Today I'm going to take you through the Common Yoga Protocol published by the Government of India under the Ministry of Ayush. This is uh, considered to be also a beginner's um, yoga routine session. So like every yoga practice, we start with a small prayer. Eyes closed. Karam Bindu Sanyuktam Nityam Dhyayanti Yoginaha Kamadam Mokshatam Chaiva Omkara Yanamo Namaha Yoga is not about pushing the body to extremities and must be practiced with a lot of mindfulness and caution. The main contraindications for each posture will be shown on the screen, but this does not replace consulting a professional if you suffer from serious injuries or conditions. This yoga session will consist of loosening practices, standing postures, sitting postures, prone postures, supine postures, kapalabhati pranayama, Dhyana and Sankalpa. Now we will begin with neck rotations that help with microcirculation. Begin by looking down, exhaling, look to the right. Inhale, come to the middle. Exhale, look to your left. Come back to the middle. Repeat this again and exhale looking to the right inhale come to the middle exhale look to the left inhale come to the middle now we will do neck bending begin by inhaling and exhale bending to the right inhale come to the middle exhale bend to the left inhale come to the middle now again exhale bending to the right inhale come to the middle exhale bend to the left inhale come to the middle next we will do forward and backward neck bending. Exhale, look down. Inhale, look up. Exhale, look down again. Inhale, look up. Exhale, come to the middle. Next, we do neck rotations. Begin by looking down and inhaling slowly, rotate the neck in a clockwise manner. Exhale while coming down. Again, inhale slowly, rotating the neck in a clockwise manner. Exhale while coming down. Inhale slowly while rotating the neck in a anti-clockwise manner. Exhale while coming down. Once more, inhale slowly, rotating the neck in an anti-clockwise manner. Exhale while coming down. Now we will do the shoulder rotation. Stretch the arms in front of you and bring the hands to the shoulders. Begin rotating the elbows outwards in a circular manner. Repeat this five times. Try to touch the elbows in the front of the chest and touch the ears while moving up. 
repeat five times again moving the elbows inwards in a circle circular motion next we do the shoulder stretch interlock the finger behind the head and stretch the arms up gently bend to the right being careful not to strain come to the middle again bend to the left and come to the middle bend again to the right being careful not to strain come to the middle bend to the left and come back to the middle and drop the arms now we will do the trunk twisting keep the legs 2 to 3 feet apart inhale raise both the arms exhale look over your right shoulder bring your left hand to your right shoulder and bring your right hand behind your back inhale come to the middle exhale look over your left shoulder bring your right hand to your left shoulder and left hand behind your back come back to the middle next we do the knee exercise inhale lift your arms up exhale bend the knees and bring down your body to the squatting position inhale and straighten the body exhale again bring the knees to the squatting position inhale and come back we now do the standing posture tadasan keep the feet two inches apart interlock the fingers turn the wrist outwards inhale and raise the arms up raise the heels off the floor stay in this position exhale bring the heels down once more inhale interlock the fingers and stretch your hands over your head and raise the heels off the floor bring the heels down next we do vrikshasan lift your right leg up and place your foot in your thigh lift your hands up and hold steady exhaling bring your arms down and release the posture we do it on the other side lift your left leg up and place your left foot on your inner thigh lift your hands over your head and join the palms release the hands and release the foot next we do the pada hastasan the hand to feet posture begin by raising the hands inhale exhaling come forward and try to take your hands towards your toes as much as possible without bending the knees and hold this posture breathe normally in this position if you experience any pain or discomfort ease off the posture and come back to the upright position now inhale come up slowly to the vertical position stretch the arms over the head exhale and return to the starting position next we do the ardha chakrasan place your hands on your waist drop the head backwards stretching the neck muscles you inhale bend backwards from the lumbar region inhale and slowly come up ardha chakrasan makes the spine 
flexible and strengthens the spinal nerves. Do it a second time, dropping the head backwards. You inhale, bend backwards from the lumbar region again. Inhale and slowly come up. Next, we do the Trikonasan, angle posture. Stand with your feet comfortably apart. Raise both the arms sideways till they are horizontal. The right leg is turned to the right, the left leg is turned a little bit to the left. Exhale, slowly bend to the right side, place the right hand just behind the right foot. The left arm is straight up in line with the right arm. Turn your head and gaze at the tip of the middle finger. Remain in this posture for a few counts with normal breathing. As you inhale, slowly come up. We now repeat it on the other side. Again, both the arms sideways. Exhale, slowly bend to the left side and place the left hand just behind the right foot. Turn the left palm forward and turn your head and gaze at the palms. Hold this position for a few counts. Inhale slowly and come up. We do the Trikonasan a second time. It's a very beneficial posture, strengthens the calf, thigh, waist muscles, it makes the spine flexible and improves the lung capacity. So again, raise both the arms, exhale slowly, bend to the right side and place the right hand behind the right foot. The left arm is straight up in line with the right arm. Turn your head and look towards the ceiling. Hold this position with normal breathing. Inhale slowly and come up. We repeat it on the other side. Both arms sideways are lifted and then exhaling very slowly. Bend to the left side. Place the left hand just behind the left foot. The right arm is straight up in line with the left arm. Turn the neck and look towards the ceiling. Hold. Inhale slowly and come up. We now move on to the sitting postures. The first one is Bhadrasan, the firm or auspicious posture. Sit down, cross legged, and bring your feet together so that the heels are touching each other. Exhale, pull your heel as close as possible to the perineum region. If your thighs are not touching or not close to the floor, a soft cushion can be kept underneath the knees for support. Gently flap the knees. This is an extremely beneficial posture. Keeps the knees and hips joints healthy. It relieves the knee pain, tacks on the abdominal organs and releases any tension in the abdomen. It's very beneficial for women by relieving abdominal pain often experienced during menstruation. Avoid this practice if you are suffering from severe arthritis or sciatica, etc. If you are comfortable in this position, then bend forward and place your head on the floor. Come back to the normal sitting posture. From here, we move on to doing the Vajrasana. 
It's also called the thunderbolt posture. We fold the knees and sit on our heels. The hands are kept on the respective knees. The spine is kept erect. This posture is extremely beneficial as it strengthens the thigh muscles, the calf muscles. This asana is also good for digestion. Provides a firm base to the spine and keeps the spine erect. The next one is the Ardha Ustarasan, the half camel posture. We stand on our knees and place the hands on the waist at the back. We keep the elbows and the shoulders parallel and bend the head back and stretch the neck muscles. Gently come back to the middle and if you are comfortable, we move on to the Ustarasan camel posture. Raise the hands one by one and take it behind and place them over your heels. Now drop the head behind giving your neck a good stretch. Remember that this is considered an advanced variation. So if you experience pain or discomfort, discontinue the posture. Release the hands and come back to the normal sitting posture. Next, we do the Shashakasan, the hair posture. Sitting in Vajrasan, we stretch the arms forward bend forward and put the head on the ground this posture helps in reducing stress anxiety etc it tones up the reproductive organs it improves digestion and relieves back pain come out of the posture Next, we do the Uttana Mandukasan, the stretched up frog posture. We sit in Vajrasan, but here we spread both the knees uh, wide, while the toes are remaining together at the back. Raise your arms up, fold them and take it behind and place them behind on the shoulders keeping the elbows up come out of the posture by bringing the arms gently down and bring your knees together from here we do the vakrasana the spinal twist posture vakra means twisted so we stretch our legs out bend the right leg and place the right foot beside the left knee. You exhale and twist the body to the right. Bring the left arm around the right knee and clasp the ankle or the big toe or you can place the palm next to the right foot. Turn the left arm behind and look over your shoulders. Feel that your shoulders are relaxed. Release your hands and stretch your legs back. Bend the left leg now and bring the right arm around the left knee and try to grab the toe or place the palm near the left foot. Turn your neck and look over your right shoulder. Release the posture and stretch your legs out. From here, we move on to the prone postures. Makarasan is the first one, the crocodile posture. We lie down on our stomach. My feet are together. Bend both the arms and place the right hand on the left hand and place the forehead on your hands. And alternatively, kick your feet towards your backside. This is a very relaxing posture. We move on now 
to the next posture the bhujangasan the cobra posture this is the sarala bhujangasan the easy bhujangasan the hands are kept next to the shoulders and we gently lift our head up and look to the front exhaling we come back inhale lift our head up exhaling we come back the next is the intermediate bhujangasan where the palms are kept next to the chest palms are folded and we inhale and look forward exhaling we come back again inhale and lift the chest up and look straight ahead exhaling come back now we do the shalabhasan the locust posture lie down on the stomach again the hands are kept under the thighs folded we lift the right leg up and hold it exhaling drop the right leg inhale lift the left leg up exhale drop the left leg now inhaling lift both the legs off the floor and hold it exhaling come back next we do the supine postures turn around and lie on your back this posture is called the setu bandhasan the bridge posture lie on the back fold the knees bring the heels towards the buttocks lift your hips off the floor and try to grab your ankles with your hands stay in this position for a few counts breathe normally release the posture and drop your back to the floor do a second round grabbing the ankles with your hands lifting your seat off the floor the chin is on the chest and release again relax and stretch the legs out we now do the uttana padasan the raised feet posture the hands are placed by the sides inhaling we slowly raise both the legs up without bending the knees to a 30 degree angle we maintain this a position with normal breathing exhaling we bring both the legs down and place them on the ground we repeat this posture another time this time we lift both the legs up and take it to a 90 degree angle breathing in normally we hold this posture the body from hip to shoulder is kept straight and slowly release the legs bring it towards the floor and relax continuing on this series the next one is the pavana muktasan the wind releasing posture we fold one leg bring the knee towards the chest interlocking the fingers we raise our head and take it towards our knees and come back again lift your head once more try to touch your nose to the knees come back stretch the leg out and do it on the opposite side fold the leg grab the knee with your hands and try to 
touch your nose to your knees. And come back. Do it one more time. The nose towards the knees. Press it. And come back. And relax. Now lift both the legs up. Grab your knees. And place your nose on the knees and relax after this we do the shavasana the dead body posture we lie down on our back arms and legs are comfortably apart the palms are facing upwards the eyes are closed we relax the whole body consciously the feet are apart and they are dropped to the sides we become aware of the natural breathing and allow it to become rhythmic and slow Here, we wiggle the toes, stretch the arms upwards, bend the knees and turn the body to the left side. The eyes are still closed. We are still relaxed. From here, taking the help of the floor, slowly come back into the sitting posture. Eyes are still closed. Take your time and sit, relaxing the body, breathing in very slowly. Rub your palms together to generate warmth. Place them over your eyes. Open your eyes very slowly. Doing the Namaskar Mudra. And we end here the Asana session. We move on to now doing the Kapalabhati breathing practices. Kapalabhati is considered to be a heating practice. It balances and strengthens the nervous system and tones up the digestive system. Adopt the Dhyana Mudra by touching the index finger to the thumb and place it on the knees. In Kapalabhati, the inhalation is natural but the exhalation is deliberate or forceful. So we continuously exhale by taking the abdomen inside and avoid undue movements to the shoulders and the chest. Do this about 40 rounds.
stop the kapalabhati practice and breathe normally inhaling and exhaling deeply slowly and relax after the kapalabhati we do the anuloma viloma pranayama or the nadi shodhana pranayama we keep our hands in what is called the vishnu mudra where the index finger and the middle finger is touching the base of the thumb the thumb is kept on the right nostril and we inhale through the left nostril and we cover the left nostril with the ring finger and the little finger and exhale through the right nostril inhale 2 3 4 exhale 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 inhale 2 3 4 exhale 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 inhale 2 3 4 exhale 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 inhale 2 3 4 exhale 2 3 4 Five, six, seven, eight. Inhale, two, three, four. Exhale, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Inhale, two, three, four. Exhale, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, and breathe normally. next we do the bhramari pranayama bhramari means the bhi the practice of the bhramari pranayama relieves stress and helps in alleviating anxiety and anger place the thumb on the ears very gently place the middle finger the ring finger on the eyes the index finger is on top of the eyebrows and the little finger is near the nostrils close the mouth and inhale making the sound of the b after the third round let go of the hands and relax breathing in normally the resonance effect of the humming sound creates a soothing effect on the mind and the nervous system it's a preparatory pranayama for concentration and meditation next we do the shitali pranayama shitali means cooling roll the tongue from the sides to shape as a tube inhale through this tube fill the lungs with air to their maximum capacity and close the mouth and then exhale through the nostrils roll the tongue again and inhale through this tube shaped tongue fill the lungs with air close the mouth and exhale through the nostrils repeat it a third time breathe normally after the breathing practice we do omkar chanting so close our eyes 
inhale and chant om we chant this 11 times om After the Omkar chanting, we do Dhyana or the meditation, an act of continuous contemplation. Eyes are closed with slightly upturned face. You need not concentrate, just maintain a mild focus on the incoming breath and the outgoing breath. We are observing each and every breath that comes in and the breath that goes out. Simply observe the thoughts and allow them to pass. Meditation is the most important component of any yoga practice. Towards the end of the yoga practice, there is a sankalpa, an affirmation. I commit myself to be always in a balanced state of mind. It is in this state that my highest self-development reaches its greatest possibility. 
I commit myself to do my duty to self, to family, at work, to society and to the world for the promotion of peace, health and harmony. I end it with a Shanti Pata Mantra. Sarve Bhavantu Sukhinaha, Sarve Santu Niramayaha, Sarve Bhadrani Pashyantu, Ma Kaschit Dukkha Bhag Bhavet. Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. Rub your palms together. Place them over your closed eyes. Open your eyes slowly. This concludes our yoga session. Namaste.